are at the Children's Garden at the Sand Hills Research and Education Center in Columbia, South Carolina, and I'm with Vicki burton -Ollie, one of our favorite extension agents, and she knows a lot about fire ants. Vicki, um, I think you've got to be pretty careful where you take kids these days because you sure don't want them getting eaten up by those fire ants. Absolutely not. You know, fire ants can be a real health hazard. Um, even though they're useful in the landscape with being a, a number one predator there, but they also have a medical issue. Some people are very allergic to them, just like your other ants, bees, and wasps. Um, people can have re negative reactions such as anaphylaxis. And y'all have a system that call, I think, the Texas Two-Step that's really exciting because I like it. It's easy for a homeowner, and from what I understand, it's really pretty targeted towards ants. So tell me about the product that we're going to use today. Um, one of the products that we're going to use today is a bait. Um, so fire ants think it's food, so they're actively going to seek this stuff out. Um, that's going to be our first step. And then the second step usually takes a week later, but you know, for, for time's sake, we'll show a little bit of it today. Um, they use a, a contact insecticide to get what we call problem mounds. These are going to be mounds that are where the kids are going to play, where the dogs sleep, where you park your car next to the front door, the sidewalk, things like that. And so the bait is when we look at it, it looks kind of like cornmeal or something. So tell me what's in it and, and how we're going to go about deciding when we should apply it. Some folks say that it looks like cornmeal. Some folks say that it looks like grits. And the reason why is because these are actually ground up corn cobs. So it's not the same as cornmeal and it's not the same as grits. So it's ground up corn cob. They have soybean oil on it as an attractant for the fire ants. And then there's also a toxicant in it. Um, but these things are, the baits, the way that they're formulated are very, very safe. Um, and we're going to broadcast this with a hand spreader throughout the landscape. Okay. Well, you said it's important that the environmental conditions are right. So tell me what we're looking for on the days when we think maybe we should go out and apply a bait. Whenever we're trying to apply baits, there's some timing issues you need to think about. Um, we have, the research has shown that you apply fire ant baits in late May, early June late September, early October. And what we're looking for is whenever the ground temperatures are consistently 70 to 85 degrees. So even though the ambient temperature may be 80 degrees, the ground temperature at night may not be, and it, they've got to be consistent over several nights in order for fire ant for their metabolism to catch up with the weather conditions um, because t insects are very temperature dependent on how things work. And so they have to catch up with the, with the weather conditions. And then whenever it's nice and consistent, 70 to 85 degrees on the ground, um, it's time to put out your bait. But you have a little pretest to see if they are really actively foraging, which I guess means I call it going to Walmart and shopping. So tell me what that little pretest is. We tell people if you don't remember anything, remember the potato chip test. Um, you take a regular greasy potato chip. Not, not a fat free. The, not a fat free, not a baked one. Um, they need that, that soybean oil or the peanut oil that's been uh, fried in. And so we put that potato chip out, leave it for 10 minutes, come back. If there's fire ants on it, you can put out your fire ant bait because that means that they're foraging. Now, when you put this bait out, have I got to get it on every single square cubic centimeter of ground? Because this is a bait and ants think that the bait is food, they actively forage for this stuff. So you don't have to be exact. You don't have to walk in a perfectly straight line. You don't have to cover every single inch of your yard. Um, this is one of those things where it can be a little messy, and um, which means not, not perfect, and it'll still be fine. Now, since it does look like a little granule, do I need to make sure that the ground is dry? Is that important? It is important that the ground be dry. Um, if you put your bait out early in the morning, make sure that the dew's dry. And the reason is, is if you put the bait out whenever it's wet, the corn cob uh, grit will end up getting wet and mushy. And then that means that the fire ants don't think it looks very good, it doesn't taste very good, and they're not gonna pick it up. Now, how long does it take when we put this typical bait out before we see a reduction in the activity? Depending on temperature and depending on what product you use, it can take anywhere from, like if you use one of the faster acting baits, it could take a few days. Most of the time it takes uh, four to six, eight weeks before you're gonna see a reduction. But if you're applying it twice a year, every year, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna over time see the reduction because your spring application um, controls your fire ants during the spring up through the end of the summer, and then your fall application um, 
treats your fire ants from the fall up through the winter into your next spring application and so it's nice and consistent. Now this product has a short time frame of activity I believe and that's good and but it also means from what I've learned that fire ants are mating and new ones are coming down so when you put out this bait I guess it gets all the fire ants that are on the property that day. Um, yes, the, the way that baits work, it's going to be fed through the mounds um, and that's why you're treating it twice a year is because you're targeting at the times when they're going to have the highest incidences of mating flights. And so um, if you do it too early, um, they haven't had the mating flights and so you're not, you don't have a lot of potential um, queens out there and available so that they can get the bait. If you, same thing in the summertime and so that's why you time it so that it's spring and fall. But if I'm getting ready to have, um, oh, suppose one of, you know, somebody's coming over to, you know, that I hadn't seen in a long time and I go out and all of a sudden I see that overnight it seems like this mound has popped up even though I treated a while back, what can I do in that situation? Um, you can actually use a contact insecticide if you want to. Um, it's it's going to be fast acting for right then and there. It's probably not going to kill the queen, but you'll kill enough of the workers so that the, the mound probably won't be a problem. Okay. Um, and if people want to learn more about treating fire ants, um, are there some extension sites that have good information for there's, people? There's several of them. Um, there's the Clemson HGIC has a fact sheet on treating fire ants in vegetable gardens and then the e-extension website, which is extension.org slash fireants, it's a clearinghouse for fire ant information. All the universities that do work on fire ants have put all of their research in one place. Well, I'm really excited to think that if I'm on a picnic, I may have some little ants that are native to South Carolina, but I won't have those mean old fire ants. And thank you for explaining this to us. You're very welcome, Amanda.